Lego, my james -o. Hey everybody, are you new to BrickLink? Are you always wondering, hey, how do I ship things out that are a box like this, a set like this, a figure like this, or anything, any Lego piece or part whatsoever, and you're wondering, how do I ship something out and charge different prices for different items? And you know, how can I offer fast shipping or insurance, all sorts of things? Then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to set up your shipping preferences and methods on your BrickLink store today. And I will have other videos for items I miss, things you might have questions about. If there's something you're wondering about, you know, leave a comment, I'll get back to you or I'll even make a, a video for it if it's uh, a pop in popular demand. But essentially, I'm going to talk about shipping methods on BrickLink once you have your store up and running. Um, this is something important to have. That way you can have just uh, quick, easy payments come through to your PayPal account or your Stripe account. And then you could just ship something out without having an invoice. It was pretty amazing when I started it. And I love having the option to just get paid directly. And that way you can pack an order, mail it out, and everybody's happy. So without further ado, let's get into BrickLink. And I'm going to show you how to create your own shipping methods. So... Oh, that's a cool set, let me tell you. It's the, uh, this one. Yes. All right, here we go. Come on. All right, so what you're going to want to do, go to BrickLink, log in. If you're still creating a store right now, until you have positive feedback and a store page, you won't be able to access these features. But for now, this is kind of a step-by walkthrough for it. So you'll go to my store up here, you'll select settings, and then you'll have all of these all of these options. So the video right after this one will be about store terms. And then after next week's videos, I'll explain some of these. And you know, if you have questions, let me know, I can get back to you. But I will go into all of these at one point in time coming up. All right, so shipping, we go to this section here. Do not be uh, frightened by all of these methods here. I have many shipping methods and it's just for the size of my store and the fact that I ship anywhere in the world. But when you first open your store, you will have what is known as requesting an invoice. So requesting an invoice is your default thing and it's how BrickLink started. Essentially, when somebody purchases something from you, if you don't have shipping methods available, they can purchase the set or the parts, whatever you're selling, they can purchase their order. It gets sent over to you you can look at the order and figure out and do cost uh, estimates on websites and figure out, okay, how much is it going to cost me to mail this out? You then charge them the shipping and any fees you charge based on your terms, and you send that invoice over to them. They will then be able to click on that, pay for it, send you your money. And once you have money for it, you can then pack your order, put it together, uh, package it together and ship it out, you know, put a label on it and get it out the door. So first things first, um, there's a lot of features on here and you won't need to know or use all of them, so to say, but you typically just have your name of your invoice. So, or the name of the shipping method. So this will change based on what you have. You have icons. These icons help determine kind of which shipping method you're talking about. It's more for an organization thing. You don't necessarily need to worry about what the icon is, but you can change them to make your store look cleaner or better. Um, I always add a note to buyers. You could tell them kind of what the method is, how quickly it will arrive to them. Anything, anything will work. Enabled or disabled, pretty self-explanatory. Enabled means that buyers can see this option. If it's disabled and you're still working on it and you're not sure if it's quite right yet, then leave it as disabled. Manual, that just means, again, invoice will be sent. You have to then, um, they'll send over the order, you send over the invoice and then they'll pay. Where when it's automated, which I'll show you soon, that is pretty awesome because they just directly see, okay, it costs me $4.99 to ship this. They pay for the entire order and boom, you get your, you're paid instantly and you can pack the order and get it out there. Uh, quotes is pretty cool. A quote is more or less for um, estimating shipping. And it's I use quotes quite a bit with international buyers. So they'll send an order over. I'll be able to see it, calculate their shipping and send over the uh, you know their quote. If they are fine with that quote, then they will pay for that order and it goes smoothly it prevents them it prevents people from placing an order and then canceling it when they find out shipping is more expensive than they want so i always offer quotes um and then this is just the default method because it's if there isn't anything if your other shipping methods do not fit for the size of their order then this one will show up so this is the default um, what i mean by that is some shipping methods might have dimension 
uh, boundaries or, you know, weight boundaries. So if they order something that's this large or, you know, heavier than a pound that it wouldn't show up on the first class option or other options that I'll get into. So destination, that will all depend on your store. You can decide on where you want to send. For now, if you feel comfortable just sending domestically, stick with that. And then I could even do multiple videos on international shipments and what you should look out for and tips and tricks. Um, this is not zone based. Uh, this won't matter right now because this is for requesting an, an invoice. And I'll show you on first class what I do with this section here. Again, location. You could offer discounts. I don't have any for this shipping method, but you can check through them. You could do a percentage off orders based on prices and uh, or even fixed rates. And you could do discounts on shipping. So insurance, I'll have a whole video on insurance because it can get pretty involved. And there's some things I've learned over time. And insurance is something relatively new that I got into um, having you know, offering buyers that option. So I'll have a separate video on that. Fees down here is pretty cool. You can have handling fees in multiple different ways. You could do a, um, you know, a minimum lot value. I don't have any minimum lot values or things like that, but if you, some people have this where, okay, every lot you purchase has to be at least $2. So what that means is that, you know, if this is listed as a figure or a set, that would be one lot. Um, but, and then if this one by one red plate is listed, that would can be one lot so your average has to be a certain number there um i don't do that i let people do whatever they want buy whatever pieces they want i don't want to deter customers um you could have minimum buys a fixed percentage of your items what i there's so there's options here go through them i don't need to explain everyone so to say but essentially the way i do mine is that if you spend over five dollars, so over over here it says over four dollars and ninety eight cents, a seventy five cent fee will be applied. So every order essentially gets charged seventy five cents. Anything under the four ninety eight, so anything um, you could see how I differed this here. So essentially anything under four ninety nine. So even if it was four dollars and ninety eight cents, it would be charged a dollar ninety nine um, fee. So it really I allow customers to purchase. Even if they want to just get one little piece, they can do so, but they have to pay a greater fee plus the shipping. Where having this, um, you know, dollar ninety nine, really, most buyers then decide, okay, I'll spend at least five dollars on stuff. So that's helpful, but I don't deter them from, you know, I don't push them away because they only want a dollar worth of parts. Um, again, there's not many. You don't deal with many small orders. Most of them probably are fifteen to twenty dollar orders depending on the size of your store. But when you first start out, if you have some specialty parts, people might want to buy a piece or two. And when I did first start out, I did have a, a buy of uh, $5 because I wasn't getting as many orders. And this is many years ago. So if you're only listing so much and you don't want to deal with small orders, have a minimum buy of 3 to $5. That way you get more parts out the door. But as your store grows, you can get rid of that. Um, order restrictions, you have your min buy and your max buy. I don't restrict that, but you could Again, that is um, that is what I was just talking about. And then you could have package restrictions. I'll show you that in a, in a method coming up, and as well as adjustments. Adjustments, all that essentially is, on um, BrickLink, each item has a set weight. So let's say this set is 4 ounces or 4.1 ounces, and it turns out that, oh, it's 4.3 or it's slightly higher. So then now shipping changes uh, a little bit, or the dimensions are a little greater than you thought they would be. That's all this adjustment is for. It just accounts for errors, so it's helpful in terms of packing. That way, somebody's not selecting a certain shipping method, and you're like, oh, I can't fit this in that size box, and now it's going to cost an extra $2. doesn't sound like a massive problem, but it's something to be cautious of and understand. Okay, so that's essentially, that is the first class, or excuse me, that is requesting for an invoice. And the, um, what I'm going to show you now is, um, how to create shipping options. You can add a shipping method and they have what is known as shared shipping methods. These are quite helpful. I recommend using one of these to start. The first class one is very helpful. And then you have all these priority mail options, which I'll show you. And then, you know, retail ground and whatnot. And the list goes on and on. But my first class option, essentially I pulled it from there and I edited it. So you already talked about this. This is where it's automated. So they pay directly. And this is where uh, it things really change from your invoices. Okay, de destination's the same, but base rate, 
you go by a weight band. And so weight band allows you to say, okay, as you can see here, here's my list. From zero to three ounces, it's 349, and it just keeps going down. And then I do not let anything over 15 ounces because, you know, your packaging will be around an ounce for bubble mailers. So, and then that's the highest price there. Um, and as you, if you edit these numbers, like if I bumped that up to seven, it automatically changes that to 7.01. So it, it just kind of makes the list that way. So it's quite helpful. Again, I have, um, oh, we'll talk about insurance soon, but I, I have the same fees. Every shipping method you have and every one, single one you add, you'll have to add in your same fees. Um, the reason for this is you could have methods that say free, free handling charge, or, you know, you can have a different restrictions for different methods. So it allows for a lot of, uh, variability, so to say, and that's why they do that. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't touch on this earlier, but adding tracking, you can decide to do this and, you know, update the tracking for orders, but I just have a note in my store terms, which you'll see in the next video that just states, you know, please see your PayPal. So when they pay me and they, they'll get a notification saying, hey, the buyer created a label. And once I ship it, they'll get their tracking right away and can see where their package is and follow it. So essentially, that's kind of how this works on BrickLink. It's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I have a lot of methods here, so you don't need to have all these. But something like these medium flat rate boxes, they're great uh, because you can get boxes from... Uh, you know, you can get boxes for free from the US, uh, USPS store online and they'll send them to you and you can use them to mail them out. So they're pretty helpful. Essentially, everything in here is the same. And as you can see, I added one weight band. This weight band is just the maximum weight that can go in here. So anything from zero to 102 ounces is what I allow because I find that that's about what I can fit in a medium flat rate box. Um, I didn't add insurance to this one yet, so I need to hop in there and do that soon and to give people that option. So I'll show that. I'll create that in the one video and show you doing that. Again, same fees down here. And this is where I added a package restriction. So this is something different. And all this is is a restriction based on volume. So each item in BrickLink typically has a volume. And if it doesn't, you can add it yourself. Likewise, you can add a weight. I will show you that when we, uh, when I show you how to list things, and that will be also a whole nother video. But when you get along to that point, you'll put in dimensions for a set, you know, something like this set would already have its dimensions in BrickLink and its weight. But if it's a new set, it might not, or some old ones don't have that information. So you can input that that way. Then if somebody bought this and a bag of parts from my store and a couple figures and okay, it doesn't fit in my, it doesn't fit in a bubble mailer or uh, or the flat rate padded envelope, it, 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 the next option would be, okay, they'll pick a medium flat rate box. So they'll send in that. Or I also have other options like um, uh, ground shipment and um, I don't know, just a couple other options. So feel free to check them out, go through different options here. Honestly, just if you check out all the options they have for choosing a method, you can click through these, you could add them. And you know, if I wanted to just add Let's say I'm just going to add this one just here and I'll just hit confirm to show you what it's like. So I just added this method, but the big thing here is I'm leaving this disabled. Leaving this disabled allows me to work on it and figure things out, edit things here, add zones, and essentially, you know, you can just change things and work with it. And when you're comfortable and you feel as though everything's correct, you can go up here and simply click enabled and then save changes. And then that would um, that would make that live. So go through those, check it out. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have a question on something I missed here. Again, please check out for more videos uh, from Lego My James though. And uh, I'll help you get started with your Brickling store. That's my goal. I want to get your store off the ground and help you. So please like and subscribe. Thank you. I hope this video was helpful. And uh, check out the next video if you want to know your, how to do your store terms. So thanks.